Hello and welcome to our second part of this uh, small tutorial series, I guess. This one we're going to be going over basic animation. And as you can see in front of me, we've got um, two simple models. This one, we're going to get into a second for the more, um, I guess, intermediate stuff. So what I'm going to be going over in this video is basic beginner animation, as well as getting into some of the more intermediate stuff that you you will probably still want to use to, uh, you know, make your animation just that much better. Anyway, so let's get started here. So here we've got a um, small little couch model thing I made using the um, ruling that I uh, demonstrated in the previous episode. Anyway, so um, yeah, let's start with the couch. Simple enough. Now, how do you animate this might be your first question. Well you could see that you got your timeline down at the bottom. So you might be thinking, oh, maybe if I um, drag over a few frames and then I move this, it'll, no, that's not going to work. This is not the um, same as some other programs. No, instead what you're going to, want to do is select the object you want to animate. So in this case, the couch. And I'm going to go down to this auto button. Now for you, it's probably going to say auto key. It does the same thing in the end if you hover over it. So you click that at <coughs> Excuse me, and you'll notice that there's a red box that surrounds the um, scene now. Also, um, one more thing I'll at mention: if your instructor provides the um, file for this, then you could follow along. If not, you can either just watch or you can create your own models quickly to play along. Doesn't matter as long as you're learning. All right, anyway, so here we got a red box surrounding it. So now you might be wondering, oh, how does this work now? So we got a red box. Simple. Now is when you drag your thing along the timeline to, uh, let's say frame 60, since currently we're running at 30 frames a second, that's a two second animation. And <clears throat> let's drag along the Y axis. Now you'll notice that there's a um, red box that has been created in two areas, both on the frames that we've seen so far, frame 0 and frame 60. Now if I unselect auto key, you'll notice that as I drag it, it the couch moves on its own. And if I play this back, nice smooth animation, perfect for I guess starting off. Basic keyframe animation you could say I guess. Anyway so, here you got your starter animation, two beginning points, the start point, the end point. Now if you wanted to, you can go to any of these frames in the middle and, you know, just drag this around a little bit. So now if I play this back, you'll notice that it goes over there first and then it goes over to the um, frame 60. Or if I want, I can have it elevate and be over here. You know, just play around with this a little bit. And... Nice and basic. Nothing too hard. Very easy to mimic. Alright, so there's just the um, basic movement animation. Same thing goes for rotations. If I come up here to the um, wind turbine looking thing, I'll select the propeller, which I also made this um, whole structure using the um, boolean tool. Of course, the propeller is separate though for this purpose. So, this time instead of being on the uh, move tool, I'm going to switch over to the rotation tool. E is the shortcut, if you did not know that. Same thing, auto rotate. Um, let's say frame 30. Let's, no, let's go the whole frame. So, what I'm going to do is just, you know, drag this around, and however far I drag it is what the animation is going to do. Simple enough. Same premise as the um, move tool. Now, so you might notice that for both these animations so far, they'll start off slow, speed up, and then they'll slow down a bit. Here's where we're going to get into a little more of the, um, I guess you could say, intermediate stuff. So there's going to be this little button down on the end of the uh, timeline. Going to click that, and it's going to open this uh, menu. What I like to do first is just drag it out and, you know, make it a nice size, maybe about half the page. 
try and... Hey, got the zoom working. So anyways, now that I've got that set up, I'll close it, open it again. Now it's attached to the um, bar down at the bottom, but you get all the fun of playing with it up here. So we still got the animation of the propeller spinning. So you'll notice that when I clicked on that, you'll this stuff expanded showing box three, which was the um, propeller's name. I'll scroll down here a bit. And you also notice that it's selected on the rotation. And in fact, you'll notice rotation Y is green, and we got us a green line that's flowing down. This is your animation spleen. Well, you could call it your animation spleen if you have um, worked in Flash and whatnot, but if you haven't, don't worry about it. So if I click on the um, one keyframe point up here, you'll notice that there's this um, little handy button thing up here. It's a little hard to see because there's this blue line in the way, but if I were to click here, you'll you get a better view of it. It's just the dash blue line with a little gizmo at the end. So here you can actually see how the animation plays out. You can see that it does in fact go at a normal speed and then it eases in. <clears throat> so you could drag this around and be like, oh, I want to change this around, yay. Or if you don't know exactly how you want it to look yet, what you can do is, um, let's say select here. You got all these fun little curves up or buttons up here to change the tangent which is what this is called so you can do auto tangent it sets it for you tangent spline more of a sharp angle it's fast slow you can play around with these see what they do themselves you can draw curves and whatnot now my favorite one is the tangent smooth it just has a nice smooth flow to it of course you'll have to select that for all of them so if I select both those to smooth you notice that's just a straight line so if I were to play back the animation now it, it just spins the same speed constantly now let's say you're looking to have it sort of sync up so it starts in the same place it finished but you didn't do it when you were originally making the animation but and you don't want to go back and change the keyframe know where you can do that right from here if I remember how to exactly that is <laughs> No, it's not that hard. So you just gotta drag this around. So if I drag it down here, it'll be right on 800. I can't do the math, but if I play this back, let's see up here. Perfect. It looks seamless. Now, if you do not want it to end on the same thing that you want to start on, well, simple enough, you can just, let's say, drag this backwards one frame. So it's got a slight offset now so the start the ending frame is now the starting frame and the starting frame is off a little bit I've done a couple animation projects where uh, that's come in handy but clearly for what I'm doing here that's not necessary either way it's a good um, thing to know about in the future so that's pretty much basic bottom line animation in 3ds studio max you for a recap, you learned that you can um, do, m use the move tool and the spin tool for um, animating. Though there are a couple other things you guys should know about. Every single parameter in 3ds Max um, that this is a bad example. Still a bad example. Um, let's just add a um, let's say a melt modifier. I'm not doing anything with this, just so you guys get the idea. Every single per parameter here is editable or able to be animated. Maybe not these button ones, Don't I'm not sure yet, but say these sliders though. If you, you animate it the exact same way that you did everything else, so you know, no, for demonstration purposes, um, so back to frame zero, auto key back on, I'm gonna have that, well, start on zero. So let's drag out to about, 50 frames, and I'm gonna have the melting point of this at 1000, why not? And because the, um, of how it's set, uh, no, nope, never mind. 
So now I'm going to come back over to the final frame and I'm just going to drag this back down to zero. So you'll see now if I play it, it just grows and shrinks once again. Same way as it was rotating, it's now just growing and shrinking because I dragged this parameter. And for example, if I were to um, want to change the percentage of the melt, same thing, I just um, click, drag, and it does it all automatically for you. All you have to worry about is just changing the numbers. Very, very simple stuff, very fun to play with, just play around with stuff, and eventually you'll have something weird like this. Anyway, so again, that's basic animation. If you want to get into more advanced animation like um, rigging and character animation, then I recommend just doing a Google search or watching a two hour long video on YouTube, your choice. But anyways, that's the more advanced stuff. This, what I showed you is just bottom line basic animation. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next part when I talk about camera animation.